Hi everyone, we continue with the series dedicated to our users games and this one was submitted by uh, Baltesh Sync. So uh, if you're for the first time on this channel, make sure to subscribe to be notified about new content. And we're starting with the analysis of the game itself. Uh, so you were playing with white pieces and you started the game with a d4 and your opponent attempted a gambit response e5 d takes e5 and i have a feeling that it was just a failed gambit because quite easily uh, you got a superior position and actually got some advantage in space uh, advantage in development so things that uh, the side which uh, plays the gambit usually attempts to get so knight to c6 was played uh, you protected the pawn easily with the knight to f3 and uh, after queen to e7 and knight to c3 uh, your opponent regained the pawn so what's wrong with this approach for black uh, mainly the thing that black is not really fighting for the center with pawns but that is probably a minor issue there are lots of systems where black uh, or white for example uh, perform something like this uh, not a big deal actually the major problem is probably the fact that the queen occupies not very natural square uh, interfering with own pieces development and actually becoming an easy target for white's pieces especially for the knight um, so here after knight captured on e5 you played bishop to f4 developing the bishop attacking the knight allowing knight takes f3 uh, damaging your pawn structure a bit, but at the same time preparing castling long rather quickly. So I think as an approach, it's absolutely fine here. Um, another approach can be to play e4 to avoid uh, the bad, bad pawn structure that arises after g takes f3, right? Um, but if you still want to actually quickly cast alone, uh, I would recommend playing knight to d5. Because it's basically the same uh, as bishop to f4, but uh, it immediately uh, uses the vulnerability of the queen, and I, I find it rather good. So knight to d5. Now pay attention that the queen is overloaded, right? So uh, c7 needs to be protected, as well as the knight on e5. And if queen goes somewhere to d6, there is some like bishop f4, which which is already almost winning position so after knight takes f3 g takes f3 and queen to d8 which looks safe uh, you continue with the e4 and uh, what is the advantage compared to bishop f4 you played in the game well here your bishop is still on c1 so you uh, have a chance to develop this bishop differently because f4 is not the best position in each and every case for example after black's response like knight to f6 it's much better to put the bishop on g5 so uh, imagine your bishop is already on f4 you get to g5 in two moves here you just save a tempo a valuable tempo you can use for something else all right uh, for example bishop e7 knight takes queen takes and then queen to d4 and same stuff so you're ready to castle for example after h6 bishop h4 d6 you just castle but uh, you know we have very active setup here i believe uh, it's a better version of what you've got in the game all right so just consider playing knight e5 instead of bishop f4 in my opinion it's more flexible continuation but bishop f4 is not bad for sure but after knight takes f3 and g takes f3 uh, you should have been ready for black's next response and i'm talking about queen to b4 because whenever your bishop goes away from initial c1 position b2 is not protected uh, sufficiently which means that you should consider any sort of attack against that pawn especially when it comes to double attacks like here because as you may notice queen attacks not only uh, b2 but also the bishop which is on f4 right so you can use this moment as an exercise uh, so your task is to find why it's best continuation uh, for that, just pause the video and start it again whenever uh, you feel you're ready. And the solution is quite natural here. So basically, black is doing nothing but uh, moving the queen here and there at the opening stage, which is definitely not the right 
uh, approach uh, because Black is not doing anything else. Black is completely underdeveloped. And no surprises, why can just play queen d2 here, protecting the bishop and preparing castling loan, uh, which means that if black doesn't capture the pawn right now, white will just ca castle and uh, black ends up just moving the queen uh, to b4 and uh, not developing pieces, nothing, right? So it will be completely uh, wrong strategy. So the only move that justifies this uh, queen to b4 is to take the pawn, but it's completely bad actually. So rook goes to b1, attacking the queen, and after queen goes to a3, there is just knight to b5, attacking the queen again, and now also attacking the c7. And after queen takes a2 and rook to d1, right now black has a couple of extra pawns, but it's clear that c7 cannot be protected in a normal way. And it is actually not very surprising because uh, queen went away from d8, right? It's a clear result of black's uh, tactics here, just moving the queen here and there and leaving c7, which is quite vulnerable at the beginning of the game, alone. So white has just executed it. And uh, now, as you can see, <laughs> there is no way for black to either keep the position materially balanced, which... Uh, uh, will change in case uh, white takes on c7 with uh, check and attacks the king and the rook or keep the king in a normal position so something like king d8 comes to mind right now but it will not help after simple bishop c7 check the king will be terrible all right so uh, that is something you have to take into account anyway when you play something like bishop f4 and that's why i think knight d5 is a clearer solution because you avoid something like that you know it, it's not dangerous obviously but you again save some time and calculating something that is not worth calculating i would say all right so your opponent uh, played d6 instead uh, which is a passive move uh, and he continued with the normal e4 grabbing space uh, occupying the central square with a pawn preparing the development of the light square bishop that was great uh, but after bishop to d7 <clears throat> i would have play something else because it's clear you want to cast a lawn here castling short will be uh well quite dangerous and not very efficient right the pawn structure is just damaged here um, but why not choosing a slightly better square for queen i understand that queen d2 is quite natural it's quite typical but in this particular case we may notice that uh nothing stops you actually from uh moving your queen to uh, slightly better position it is d4 right it's a central square from where you control both flanks and uh, I know that uh, moving the queen to the center or developing the queen um, at the early stage of the game is considered not that great in many cases but in this particular case uh, your opponent cannot use it all right so there is no piece like the knight being able to go to c6 to attack your queen, uh, something like c5 is just a terrible weakening of the position, which means your queen is just perfectly placed in the center because queen benefits from the central position just like any other piece. And here you combine the preparation of the castling with bring the queen to the center, very logical. And if queen, for example, uh, goes to f6 here, trying to, um, well, exchange your queen, simplify the position, um, you can consider different things, but uh, the one which looks quite good to me is simple queen to e3. Well, it's no longer a central position, but still very good. And what's interesting here, you prevent opponent's castling in various ways. So from uh, this e3, your queen, as you can see, exerts some pressure on a7. There is also an idea like playing bishop to g5 if you want. And uh, you're ready to castle again and a knight to d5. So all in all, the queen is uh, a bit more active here than uh, on d2. But if you want indeed uh, to avoid this queen f6, you may start again with this normal programmatic knight to d5. And after queen to d8, you just play queen to d4. And wow, you control like everything here. It's really hard for black to continue the development. Uh, and, uh, well, any move like knight f6 or something like that is, uh, you know, provoking some weakening of the position um, and uh, hence quite complicated, all right? Uh, so I believe this is a better version of this queen d4 idea and I think it was worse doing compared to queen d2, which is also normal, by the way. Knight to f6, 
you made a castling and here your opponent played knight to h5. Again, violating a bunch of principles so your opponent is not actually uh, doing anything to complete a development to make the king safe and obviously uh, this should be punished somehow. Once again, it's a normal position for, you know, searching uh, for something <laughs> really active, right? Uh, there are several signs of it. So first of all, your opponent has serious problems with the development, uh, the king is stuck in the center, so on and so forth. But right now, I can understand uh, we have some sort of a problem because we want to keep that bishop on the board. We definitely don't want uh, it to be exchanged for the knight, uh, at least not on f4. Uh, because in that case, we don't get anything as a compensation for missing an otherwise very active and useful bishop, right? Position is open, we shouldn't forget it, and bishops are usually quite good in this type of positions. So, you played bishop to g3, I don't like it, although it's, it's not that bad, but uh, I really don't like it. Uh, moreover, there is a better uh, possibility in my opinion and again you can use it as an exercise just stop the video try to find it and then start the video again uh, whenever you feel ready so here bishop to g5 looks a better option to me uh, because if black plays something like f6 and it feels like the best option uh, then the knight on h5 is misplaced to start with uh, light squares are weakened and you can just play knight to d5, queen to d8, and then bishop to e3. Again, you have no problems with your pieces placement. All of your pieces occupy natural active positions, but look at that guy on h5. It's definitely not where this knight should be, right? And there is no clear way to bring it back to normal position. While well, you can easily start the attack against it, just imagine something like uh, bishop to e2 and f4. The idea you, uh, by the way, uh, used a bit later in your game. So in this case, there is no f6, there is no comeback. There is nothing to take like the bishop on g3 after your bishop g3 move. So I think white is just crashing here really soon. And uh, white gets even better uh, chances if black chooses something uh, which is not f6. Literally each and every other move looks terrible to me. Uh, let's start with the knight f6. This is just a clear waste of time because knight just went to h5, now it comes back to f6, and now you can use the pin by playing knight d5. And after queen d8, you just play e5 immediately. That is exactly what we need in a situation when the king is stuck in the center. We open up a position and it's over. So d takes e5, bishop takes f6, the easiest, and after gf6, knight takes f6. So queen cannot take because of the checkmate on d7, which means after this check we win at least a bishop, okay? So another option is to put the queen on e5 after bishop g5. Doesn't help uh, because we play knight d5 again, attacking the um, c7, which was abandoned. And since our bishop is on g5, white, white controls d8 square and black cannot castle. That's an important thing. And you can see that the queen is kind of surrounded by white's pieces, right? So here you can play f4, using the fact that if queen e4, then rook e1 wins. And if our queen goes to e6, then f5. Queen e5 and f4, forcing the queen to e4 and then trapping it like this. Nice, isn't it? So queen e6 is slightly better, uh, but uh, it's the same problem. So just knight to d5, attacking c7, then rook to c8, and then bishop to c4. Pay attention how white completes a development making most natural moves. There is no problem to find an active position for each and every piece. After bishop c4, there is a concrete threat of just taking on c7 with check and then taking the queen, and after queen g6, you just play rook g1, let's say, and it's clear that it's just completely lost for black, right? Because black is still not developed, uh, while all of your pieces are already in the game. So something simple like that should do. Queen h7, and then queen to a5, let's say, just attacking everything in black's camp uh, on the queen side, which is abandoned by black's pieces, all right? So that is the thing, I believe bishop g5 was much more concrete continuation here, much more aggressive and ambitious one, and the one which looks logical to me, because bishop to g3, well, to start with, the bishop doesn't do anything good here, all right? It can be captured at any moment, and you will lose an important attacking piece. Uh, Black could have considered taking the bishop, by the way, right, right here. So... 
you were lucky that your opponent responded with absolutely uh, wrong queen to f6 because in that case of course your bishop g3 decision uh, is absolutely justified so you played knight to d5 and uh, after uh, queen to d8 you uh, may have continued with another concrete aggressive continuation so uh, in my opinion you made another mistake here um, this one actually a bigger one than the previous so i would have used this position as an exercise as well uh, so once again your task is to find the best move for white uh, and uh, we have discussed the major drawback of black's position already so it should be just a concrete hint in this case uh, just stop the video take your time and uh, restart it again whenever you feel you're ready so the main drawback uh, I'm talking about is obviously the position of the king. So the king is still in the center. In such a situation, uh, our first candidate move should be always somehow connected with the opening of uh, the major file against this king. In this particular case, we should try to open up the E file uh, where the king is placed, right? So let's have a look at E5, the most straightforward continuation uh, trying to open up the e-file quickly by taking on d6 let's say it will force some black to take on e5 so black is in serious trouble here uh, let's start with the d takes e5 what happens in that case so bishop simply captures on e5 look at this position so look at this uh, monstrous pieces the knight and the bishop uh, in the center uh, creating concrete threats to c7 already g7 is also under pressure What's really annoying for black, I guess, is that uh, one of white's heavy pieces is coming to the e-file shortly, like queen e3 or rook e1, and there is just a direct attack against the king. So I think it's, it's just a lost position, uh, and uh, it's lost, obviously. Uh, what black can do, black can, uh, for example, start with taking the bishop here. Uh, in which case, uh, we can just recapture this way, improving the pawn structure slightly. And uh, that's not the only achievement uh, for white here. So there is still a pressure in the center and it's hard for black to complete a development. Uh, for example, if uh, black tries uh, to take on e5 in this position, white may attack this pawn with a queen. Uh, pay attention to the knight controlling e7 and f6 square. So it's really hard for black to use the queen now. Uh, c7 is also still under pressure. And after queen e2, since the pawn on e5 is pinned, uh, white may consider uh, using the f pawn to attack it additionally. Uh, for example, after bishop to d6, natural development move, white may play f4. This is already quite bad for black. Uh, the simple explanation after, say, castling, uh, black, although uh, gets the king uh, finally saved on the king side, but. Uh, it's not for a long time because h file is open and after simple f captures e5 uh, bishop may go somewhere but then it's clear that white will continue the direct attack using the h file so it's just a question of indeed uh, several moves so ideas like rook h7 come to mind uh, simple queen to h5 move let's say or maybe queen to e4 followed by bishop to d3 so there are various ideas in fact and we shouldn't forget that d5 is also quite vulnerable so white is uh, also having some targets here this bishop on d7 this queen on d8 so white may consider just combining this attack uh, on the h file and on the d file all right so that is about knight takes g3 um, finally what if uh, let's say uh, black is trying something uh, against the knight on d5 it's possible to do after capturing uh, the bishop on g3 so for example here black may think of something like bishop e6 trying to get rid of that knight well in this case queen goes to c3 and it's still quite hard for black to to survive it because c7 is under attack and if something like bishop d5 and rook d5 happens all right so what is the next uh, useful move because white is um, going to open up a position after e takes d6 now it's uh, really hard to continue the development because g7 is under pressure right so queen here from c3 is actually watching that pawn and after e takes d6 it will be possible to capture it which means bishop b7 is probably 
uh, simply impossible here, all right? Bishop b5 is coming and so on. And almost the same happens after bishop to c6, but now since the c file is probably not very um, useful for white uh, because bishop is covering it, um, queen goes to e3, so occupying the e file, and uh, there is a threat of ed6, and again, it's, it's obviously just bad for black. And finally, after e5, if black plays something like c6, then uh, it's possible just to take on d6. That is probably the most important thing because it may look like after c6 we have to go away with the knight and then d5 closes the position. Well, not really, because e takes d6 is possible here and after cd5 and rook to e1, it's basically over. So king has no moves whatsoever. e7 is controlled twice by the rook and by the pawn, so... Bishop b6 can be played, but then bishop goes to b5, and again, the king is just smothered here, all right? So e5, trying to open the e-file, the most natural idea in such a situation. The king is in the center, again, you should uh, watch for different resources uh, that actually help you open files and diagonals against the king. Instead, you played knight to e3, and I think right now, after analyzing this e5, it's clear to you that this is just a bad move. Uh, whatever the idea behind this move is just passive, and it is not what you need in such a position, right? So first of all, you move your knight from active position to a passive one right now. Uh, you don't do anything to open the e-file. Moreover, you put your knight on e-file, kind of making it harder for your uh, heavy pieces to use that file even if it is open, right? So everything is against the strategy you should follow in this situation. That's why I, I guess th this is a serious mistake and very instructive moment. So your opponent played bishop e7. As you can see now, it's possible to at least complete a development. You played rook to g1, castling, then bishop e2 with the idea of f4. That's correct. Uh, and after bishop to e6, I would have played exactly this f4 to be consistent. And in this case, after f4 and let's say knight g3 and h takes g3, you can notice that the rook on g1 is misplaced, right? So I would have started with this idea probably even before playing rook to g1. So somewhere here, maybe bishop b2, and then if casting then f4 and if knight g3, h, g3, your rook is placed correctly on the h file. That's the improvement of this idea, I guess. But anyway, you played knight to d5. And um, obviously this position is not clear yet, uh, probably white is slightly better, but your opponent made it completely lost uh, right after c6. So you just captured on e7, you captured on d6, and after queen f6 you captured on f8, winning the exchange, winning the pawn simultaneously. The only thing I didn't quite uh, understand was here where you played f4. I, I just don't uh, understand the idea behind this move. Uh, maybe you didn't notice that a four is controlled twice by black. Maybe you missed that. Um, I have no idea. But I think some sort of a blunder should be involved here. Otherwise, it's it's quite hard for me to justify such a decision. Instead of doing a four, uh, of course, since you have uh, extra exchange and extra pawn, I would have played uh, something like queen g5, trying to simplify the things. And after queen g5, rook g5, knight f4, and bishop to f1. Uh, well, you have an ending where you have extra exchange, extra pawn, and clear plan. For example, you can attack that pawn, you can then play something like bishop to c4, simplifying the position further, so gradually converting the advantage. f4, of course, a bad move, so knight takes f4 would have been played, which would have uh, made your conversion harder, because now black has uh, better material compensation and uh, better access to your vulnerabilities, because your pawn structure on the king side is not ideal. But instead, black captured on a2, uh, which allowed taking the knight on h5, which happened uh, in this game as well. So uh, here I think uh, uh, it's uh, the best moment to stop the analysis. The rest is absolutely clear. You had a decisive advantage and won the game. So all in all, a good game, a good attempt. Uh, but uh, as you have noticed, there were several uh, interesting moments where you could have played much better uh, using the concrete features of the position. And I think after this analysis, uh, these aspects are at least clearer for you and you benefited from uh, this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, 
uh, again and see you in other videos.